um, always had um, a significant number of, of students from outside of the UK um, and um, right from the very early years of the school and perhaps in the very early years one of the most significant was BRM Bedka. Um, he uh, was, was born in India um, actually from um, quite a low caste family in Hindu society but he eventually went to the University of Bombay uh, did a degree and then he won a scholarship and went to study at Columbia University in New York um, and then in 1916, he came over to LSE, where he registered for a master's degree at LSE, at the same time as he was studying for the bar. Quite a few people did that, actually. Um, a little, at about the same time, just after the First World War, um, a woman called Mithan Tata also did the same. She came here and did a master's in economics, but she was also studying for the law, and she was amongst one of the first tranche of women who were actually allowed to enter to be registered for the bar after the um, Professional Disqualification Act was um, uh, passed. He had to interrupt his studies for his master's because of the First World War. He returned to India, but he came back in 1920. He initially finished his master's degree, um, but then he registered for a PhD, which was supervised by the first professor of economics here at the school, um, Edwin Cannon, and um, on, which was eventually accepted in August 1923. There's a story that he first of all submits his, his PhD thesis and it's rejected. Uh, and there was a kind of story that this was because it was um, too critical of the British government and that he was asked to make some changes to um, his PhD as a result. I have to say that there's no, there's no indication of that in his student file. It doesn't say why it, it was rejected. And in fact, the, um, the final version of the thesis is actually not that much different than the first one. So I don't know whether it was just that, as with so many PhDs, he was just asked to tidy it up a bit and then it would be accepted, or whether it really was. Um, because I think if it was considered too um, critical, then it didn't really change very much when it was debated. He returned to India and was very prominent in the campaign for independence. And he's a very significant figure because in some ways he is... Um, He's often seen as being slightly in opposition to Gandhi, um, who, uh, and in particular, he was always very critical of Gandhi's, um, uh, what he saw as Gandhi's failure to attack the caste system with Hinduism and the kind of inherent injustices and inequalities from that. And he was eventually chairman of the Constitution Drafting Committee for the Indian Constitution. And one of the key things in the Indian con that constitution was actually protection for minorities and also for those who were within the lower caste um, areas of Hindu society. Um, and in fact, yeah, I gather, I've never been to India, but I gather that he is actually considered quite a, a hero in many areas of, of India. And in fact, a very significant figure now when we think about what's going on in, in terms of changes to the Indian constitution. Interestingly, at the end of his life, he felt so strongly about this, he actually converted to Buddhism mm -hmm. and after abandoned Hinduism. Uh, he was part of a mass conversion, uh, you know, kind of hundreds of, of him and his followers all converted to, to Buddhism at the same time. The school has always kept a kind of connection. When he was in, in London in the 1930s because of the round table meetings about Indian independence, the school did actually, you know, keep in touch with him, invited him to come back and to visit, so they had kind of kept in touch. And then uh, in later years, we've had connections with the Ambedka Society, and in fact, we have a statue of him here, which was um, given to us by um, one of the Ambedka Societies. And we also have a, a portrait of him, which was donated to the school as well. Um, at the moment, there's going to be a big project about him from Columbia University, which we're going to be working with, um, and they're hoping to have some online courses kind of, about him as well. The next couple are people you've heard me talk about.